All right, we get some questions on our trolling dipsy diver videos for spoonbill. You got to snag spoonbill because they don't hit conventional lures. You use a big treble hook. A lot of people put a large weight behind it, you know, a couple pounds of lead and troll along, or they put less lead and less lead and jerk as they're trolling along. It's a lot of work. So we use a dipsy diver to get our hooks down to the desired depth. And then also we do it in the middle of winter and the spoonbill are pretty deep. So we got some pretty extreme depths we need to get it to. So we use a dipsy diver, which is it's a trolling method for like salmon and other deep fish, where this digs into the water as you're trolling along. And then when you hit a fish, the diver releases and then it comes to the surface easier. And we put the treble hook in front of it. And then typically with dip dipsy divers, they're designed to have a crankbait or something behind it. But since we're snagging fish, we put the treble hook in front of it. And then they, a, a better thing that I like about them versus just trolling lead is there's a, a specific chart. Lure Jensen has a chart, which I'll, I'll show a screenshot here. It depends on how much line you let out to how deep it goes. So we always use line counter reels. And we're real specific about our depth. You know, we'll drive along where the spoonbill are and figure out what depth they're hanging at, where we want to put our divers. Look at the Lure Jensen chart, let out that amount of one. So we're trolling at the depth where the spoonbill are instead of just dragging it on the bottom where, we, where you lose them. I mean, they're 15 bucks American to buy these, so they're not cheap. And we'll troll along at the depth where the spoonbill are. And then to, to take it a step further, a lot of people don't realize the line counter reels are not totally accurate. Like this, this accumulable reel right here, if I let out 100, 100 feet of line and measure it, it actually reads 130 feet. So you need to adjust the depth that you're letting out on the lure Jensen chart. I mean, I used to do it all in my head. I mean, I'm pretty good with math in my head. But I, I got a little bit more scientific about it, and I'll share it with you guys show you one of my smaller poles here. If you measure this, it's 24 inches from this reel to the eyelet here. So I'll actually let out zero out your line counter and I'll count 50 times. I'll let out 100 foot of line and then I'll look at the line counter. And I know that this one, when I got 100 foot of line out, actual 100 foot of line that reads 118. So I'll take that information and I, I built a spreadsheet that you can plug in the 118 and it'll, it'll adjust all those readings and adjust the alert jits and depth chart and then I take that information and put it on a card and then as we're fishing I know when I'm using the Cabela's Depth Master Gold I have an adjusted chart say I want to go 30 feet deep I know how much line to let out based upon the inaccuracy of that reel and the lure tension chart. But if anybody wants that chart or that Excel spreadsheet, it's real easy to use. Just give me your email address in the comments of this video and I'll email it to you. And another thing on the Dipsy Divers we're going to try this year, they're also directional too. You can set them, there's a zero setting which is straight behind the boat at one and two and a three. It'll plane the divers off to the side of the boat. And uh, a friend of mine actually uses the planer setting, that way he can run four snagging poles at one time behind his boat as he's trolling. We usually run two. I mean, I got a pretty small boat, so it's a lot going on to have four poles, but my wife and I are gonna give it a try this year. That's why I have two shorter poles and a longer pole. We'll put the longer poles on the outside and set them where the divers will plane out and then set the two straight behind the boat. Another comment I wanted to make on your pole selection, this is a Cabela's trolling pole. It's actually, it's a Dipsy Diver specific pole. It has a lot of give in it and it's about 10 feet long. We don't have a problem because we're out there in the middle of the, the winter. There's not much lake traffic, but when I troll in the summer with these for like walleye, if there's a lot of waves on the lake, it'll pop your divers. It'll release this when a boat goes by and you hit a wave. Well, these Dipsy Diver poles have a lot of flex in them so it'll take the waves without popping the divers. But it has enough meat in it where whenever you hook a fish, you can pop that diver. With the spoonbill usually pop it, but if you're fishing for like small walleye, you gotta pop it on your own. 
And then I got some new poles the other day. I'm excited about trying. They're silver cat B&M catfish poles. I just wanted an inexpensive pole that was shorter, and it seemed to have the give that I was looking for in the Dipsy Diver poles.